Hi folks, Tim Sundles here again, filming from our African office, as you can see. This is a video I wanted to wait to do till we get back to our home office in Idaho. But the problem is that I'm getting dozens of questions about this. And when we started doing these videos, I said to Kim, and to myself and to a few other people, I'm going to destroy and debunk the myths and the false information in the gun industry. Because this stuff, you know, being in the gun industry and designing ammo and manufacturing it for millions and millions and millions of customers, um, the myths and the false information that's in the gun industry really destroy the industry. They keep the industry from having validity and they confuse customers big time. And this one might be my pet peeve of all of them. I'm not sure, I've got a few. Um, I wanna talk about the use of foot pounds of kinetic energy when it comes to the validity it has for effectiveness on large animals. Now, <clears throat> I don't know how these fallacies get started. This one was cooking long before I was reading gun magazines more than 50 years ago. Um, for some reason, gun scribes, and you know, there wasn't internet in those days, and everything about guns and ammunition and big game hunting was all in printed magazines. And in a lot of ways, I miss those days. One of the things the entire industry got wrong, don't ask me how, it's like when somebody says something that's new and unusual, everybody else wants to repeat it. Pretty freaking soon, it's gospel. Well, it's not gospel. It's misinformation. It's just flat wrong. So I want to talk about foot pounds of energy and how they translate to usefulness on stopping or killing big game. Um, and I'm just gonna blow the doors off by saying there's no correlation between foot pounds of energy and how projectiles, high speed projectiles, i.e. bullets, stop big game. There's none. There is some correlation to how foot pounds of energy have effect on super thin skin, fragile, small animals like humans or rock chucks or coyotes, or maybe even animals as small as white-tailed deer. But when we get up into the three, four, five, six hundred pounds and beyond with wild animals, foot pounds of energy are completely meaningless. And I mean what I said. And everybody's gonna raise their eyebrows and everybody's now gonna think for sure, this guy's so full of crap, it's coming out of his ears. But the truth is, y'all are behind. And you've been put behind by decades and decades and decades of misinformation within the gun industry. And that's why this subject is one of my pet peeves. Let's look at foot pounds of energy. You know, before we do that, let me give you an anecdotal, an anecdotal idea of what's wrong with foot pounds of energy when it comes to big animals. And I first heard this from Brian Pierce years and years and years ago, and I tried it myself. Brian hung a 600 pound bag of sand from a tree and he stood back with a 300 wind mag and you know that had 4,000 foot pounds of muzzle energy because it was using a light bullet, shot the bag. The bag doesn't even move. And the sand completely stops the bullet within a few inches of penetration. So you get immediate energy dump. Well, 4,000 foot pounds of energy ought to make that 600 pound bag swing like crazy or blow it right off the rope it's hanging on. Doesn't, doesn't even make it wiggle. So let's get into the problems with the mathematic formula for foot pounds of energy. I've got my glasses. I hardly ever take notes for these uh, videos that we do. This one is mathematical 
and I printed off the article I wrote on the Buffalo Bore Ammunition website. You can find it under technical articles about this very issue. And let me read to you what I wrote. And when did you write this? Oh, years ago. Years ago. I've known this, you know, if you actually get out and kill a bunch of crap, you find this out. You know, you may not know the mathematical formulas. And, and let me qualify what I'm about to say with foot-pounds of muzzle, muzzle energy versus the TKO formula. Uh, stands for Taylor Knockout. Again, it's John Taylor, who was an ivory poacher 100 years ago. He did a paper formula that shows why big bullets, moving slow, knock the hell out of big animals. <laughs> and and foot-pounds of muzzle energy is meaningless. So let us let me just show you one of the flaws with foot-pounds of energy. If we take the old original 4570 load, the black powder load, it was a 405 grain round nose with a little bit of flat on it, on the tip, a uh, bullet moving at 1,350 feet a second out of a long sharps barrel, okay? That gives, and I've got it here in my notes, that gives 1,638 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. If we take a 22250 with a 50 grain bullet moving at 3,800 feet a second, we get 1,645 foot pounds of energy. So slightly more than the original 4570. Well, the original 4570 load is what wiped out all the bison, you know, many of which were over 2,000 pounds in body weight. I mean, what do you want to take on a charging grizzly with? The original 4570 load? or a 22-250 50-grain bullet. <laughs> so here's the problem with the mathematic formula and the geniuses that thought this up originally. The mathematic formula for foot-pounds of kinetic energy is velocity times velocity. So velocity squared. They give a double value on velocity. Well, well, what if I pulled out of my butt a different mathematical formula which gave a triple value to velocity? It would have as much efficacy, would be even more wrong. <laughs> so, so let me read you on my notes here the, well, you want to take a, a quick picture of that, Kim? Just it's this right down here that you want. This is the mathematical formula for um, kinetic energy, <clears throat> foot-pounds of muzzle energy, in other words. Okay, so you, you all can take a picture of that. Here's the problem. Velocity times velocity times bullet weight. Why? Why is it velocity times velocity? That will always give the smaller, faster bullet a higher value than a bigger slower bullet, <laughs> you know, so, so anyway, then you divide that by 0 0.450436 for whatever reason, not sure why, and you get your foot pounds of muzzle energy. So the picture Kim just took is a, a typical 30-06, which is 2,700 feet per second times 2,700 feet per second times 180 grains, which is the weight of the bullet, divided by 0 0.450436, gives you 2,913 foot-pounds. It's a meaningless number, because it uses velocity squared. I'd get a much higher foot-pounds number if I used a 150 grain 30-06 bullet that goes much faster, even though it's less effective on big animals. So, <clears throat> of all the paper formula I've seen for describing effectiveness on large game, I'll go with the Taylor Knockout formula. The Taylor Knockout formula is much, much, much better because it takes into account the bullet diameter. It gives velocity 
one value, not two values, not a doubled value, a squared value, actually. And it takes into account the bullet weight plus the bullet diameter plus the one value of velocity. So let's take a look at what it does with the same 4570. Go ahead, Kim, it's right up here on the top. The top figure is the TKO value for the original 4570 load versus a modern 22250 load. You'll see a 35.7 TKO value for the 4570 versus a 6.14 TKO value for the uh, 22250 with a 50 grain bullet. And I guarantee you that TKO value is much more accurate on effectiveness on big game. What do you need, babe? And this is all in your article. It's all in the article. That's, yeah, that's the article you want to look for on the Buffalo Boar website. Which has it, been there for years. Yeah, which has been there for a long, long time. I wrote it. Uh, I wrote all those articles. So... Here's another problem with paper formulas. What they don't take into, into uh, account when they do this is <clears throat> the, the, I mean, the bullet diameter is important and the bullet weight's important, but it ignores bullet shape and bullet construction. You know, how your bullet is constructed, how it will penetrate on a really big, large animal and how much damage it will do is very important. That has to do with bullet material and bullet construction. Neither the TKO formula or the foot pounds of energy formula take that into consideration. Not only that, the TKO formula operates in a narrow window. It operates in the window of projectiles fired from either handguns or shouldered rifles. But if you want to get ridiculous and apply the TKO value to, say, a Volkswagen Beetle uh, going 10 miles an hour, it has a lot more energy than, say, a 600 Nitro because you're outside the window of which it applies. And, and believe me, I've gotten emails from all kinds of people over the years, well, a Volkswagen Bug going 10 miles an hour is more lethal on an elephant than a 600 nitro. Okay, well, yeah, you're stepping outside the window of which it applies. We're talking about shoulder-mounted firearms and handheld firearms. Um, I mean, one guy did the TKO formula on a bowling ball, rolling it, you know, 15 or 20 miles an hour, and said, well, you know, therefore, we should be able to use bowling balls on Cape Buffalo and elephants. And I'm like, well, if you can get them to go stand in a bowling lane, have at it. But you're probably going to get your ass killed doing something so stupid. So why don't you hold it inside the window to which it applies? So, folks, I'm telling you, foot-pounds of muzzle energy is completely meaningless and I'm going to pull a number out of my butt now. Let's say it's completely meaningless on animals that weigh over 250 pounds. And, okay, let's, let's remove the word completely. Let's say it's less and less meaningless on animals of 250 pounds. And as they go up in weight incrementally, it becomes less and less meaningless. What will matter is enough energy to push a bullet of sufficient diameter and sufficient weight to get penetration and, conf and, and enough, a proper bullet shape and buller, bullet construction to do damage to internal organs. And that means sometimes smashing through huge shoulder bones or huge skull plates, uh, but you've got to get several feet penetration on a big animal and energy alone doesn't do that. It's all about bullet mass, bullet diameter, uh, velocity. And if you square the velocity, you're going to get completely misconstrued values out of this. And whoever decided to do that, I don't know. And someday, the best 
historical expert I know in the firearms industry is actually Brian Pearson. He's younger than me, but he's spent a lifetime studying this stuff. He grew up like I did. You know, he was hand loading by the time he was 12 or 13 years old, like I was, and he was focused more on Colt single action armies and 1911 45s as a young kid. I was focused more on rifle stuff and stuff moving fast. You know, I wanted 25 out sixes and 257 Weatherbees and 300 Weatherbees. Brian's done all that too. And I'm going to ask him, he may know, who was the moron that decided to square velocity to get a value of foot pounds that's meaningful? It's not meaningful. <laughs> you want deep penetration, bone crushing penetration, a big hole. You want a big hole, not a small hole. You know, if you're going to shoot a 6,000-pound elephant, you want a big hole. Um, so having said all that, I hope you can sense my animus towards things in the firearms industry that have been going on for decades and decades and decades that are incorrect and wrong and that we all use. Even Buffalo Bore Ammo, I put the foot pounds on all of our loads because if I don't, everybody's going to ask them. And I do think foot pounds have a place, just not the place we've given them. Um, again, animals, including humans, especially frail animals, which really includes humans, under 250 pounds, I think foot pounds has a lot of meaning. And don't come back at me and say, well, I shot me an elk and it blew it off its feet. And that's the energy dump. No, it's not. It's the nervous reaction or the nervous system reaction to being shot. And that all depends on where the bullet was placed and how the animal reacts. I've shot elk that have flipped over backwards, but it was a broadside shot. Well, it wasn't the energy that sent them over backwards. It's a nerve system reaction to being shot. And depending on what part of the nervous system you've just destroyed or impacted had little to do with the energy. It had to do with the bullet placement, size of the bullet, depth of the penetration. And we can get all that with very little energy. So having said all that, folks, uh, excuse me for being animated, but I am. I have animus toward certain things in the firearm industry that have led everybody astray for decades and decades and decades. Don't know where this foot pounds misinformation started, but it's been going on since I was a kid reading gun magazines. Has nothing to do with effectiveness on big game. I promise you it, it's so inappropriate and has such a minuscule meaning on big game effectiveness of a cartridge that it's, it's, really pointless and worse, it's misleading. So I've said my piece. God bless you and please have a good day. We'll see you on the next video when I'm in a better mood. <laughs> Thank you.